In this video, I'm going to go over how we actually connect Airtable and VoiceFlow to be able to not only pull data, but also input data within any Airtable database. If you're not familiar with Airtable, it's simply think of it as a more powerful or user-friendly Google Sheets is the way we view it. And it syncs really well with VoiceFlow. So that's what we're going to use as an example. But this would also work for Google Sheets, Excel, those sorts of things. I actually had this comment from uh, somebody named Faisal. So if you're watching, this one's for you. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do is actually set up our VoiceFlow assistant. Now, if you don't already have a VoiceFlow account, just go ahead and set one up. Then you're going to want to create a new assistant, which should look something like this. There's going to be a bunch of nodes for, you know, just getting, getting everything set up. But you can go ahead and just remove those. Once you have your VoiceFlow assistant, I would go into Airtable, create a new Airtable database. For this specific example, what we're going to try to do is we're first going to try to input a new name in this database, right? Which I have a bunch of names and a bunch of statuses. And then afterwards, we're going to see if I can pull down or if I can pull the status of each person's name, for example. So if I'm a customer and my name is John and I want to check, well, what is the status of my project? Then I can just go ahead, put my name into Airtable and it should give me the status of it. Now, once you have your Airtable set up, the probably the most important thing where I think a lot of people get confused, it's how you actually allow VoiceFlow to integrate with Airtable. So we're going to start with that. All you have to do is just basically generate an API key. So to do so, click on help on the top right and then scroll all the way down. You're going to see a button that says API documentation. Click on that. And you should get a sort of screen that looks like this. Go ahead and scroll all the way to authentication. And here is going to tell you, you need to create a new authentication key. Click on this little button right here. And then it's going to give you all of your authentication keys and click on the top right, it's going to tell you create a new personal access token. So for this example, I'm going to call it Airtable integration. And this is a very important part within the scopes. We just give it everything just to make sure that there aren't any issues down the road. Then the last thing we want to do is give it access to a specific base, click on create token. And just like that, you are going to have an API token key. Make sure to save this in a, in a safe space as this is basically the keys to your house or Airtable. Any, anybody who has access to this will be able to pull that up or push that out to your Airtable database. And this key will be deleted after this recording. I'll go ahead and copy that, save it in a notepad somewhere, and you should be good to go with just that. Now, the easiest way to get started is to just ask the user what their name is and that if that name exists within our Airtable database, it should pull it back and then give us the status of said name or said project. To do so, let's start with a text card. Just greeting a user. And if you're familiar with voice load, this shouldn't be anything too surprising. After that, we're then going to say a capture card right underneath it. And this is to basically just capture whatever the user says. But we can leave it to last utterance as a variable. Here's where Airtable comes in. After we're capturing the user's name, what we're going to want to do is go to dev on the left hand side and then select the API card. What this is going to do, this is going to be a get request. But where are we getting this request from? from the Airtable database, right? So going back into the Airtable document, what we're going to want to do is as you scroll down, you'll see something that says retrieve a record. And the Airtable makes it super simple to where it'll actually show you what you should put into VoiceFlow to be able to retrieve the record that you want. For example, now I'm just going to go all the way to table 201 because this is going to retrieve everything in that table. So if I show you right here, the get record is going to be, sorry, the get request is going to be to this URL, the headers that we need. And as you can see, it's the H sending to record for headers. I'll put authorization right here. And then right under it is going to say, or right beside it is going to say bear. And then my API token. For my case, it's going to be the API token that we created earlier, which looks like this. Now, if I go and just press on send request right here, this should theoretically retrieve all of this. And just like that, you can see every single record here is being retrieved. But we don't want every single record. We only want the record that matches whatever last utterance is equal to. So how do we do that? Now, as you're probably aware, I am not a developer, right? But thankfully, now we have the technology of ChatGPT. So whenever I have a, an issue where I want to pull in some specific data from Airtable, all I do is I go to ChatGPT. I tell it, hey, look, this is the time. This is the data that I'm trying to get. I just paste in all this information from Airtable. And then I go back and forth a little bit and eventually I'll end up with something that looks like this. So if you remember initially, our table ended right here, but then I told it, look, 
we're using the formula called filter by formula, which basically allows us to only pull in specific fields that match specific criteria. So for this example, I told it, hey, look, I only want to bring in back the field name that has the word of my last utterance. So for example, if I go using this, I put a send request. If I put in John, then it'll, it'll return the field or the record that I want. If I put in another one was Mary, let's say I assume pull in Mary. Should pull in Mary in progress. Now, what if I put in nothing or put in Smith? This should become empty. Fantastic. Now we can pull in whatever data we're from specifically for that customer. Okay, great. Let's say we actually want to display the status of a user's project. All we would have to do is capture a response. And how we're going to do that is we're going to use the words response, which is whatever comes back from the Airtable API sort of pull request or get request. We're then going to go through the records. Since there's only one, it's going to be zero right here, which whenever you're going to records, it starts at zero, which is one. Then we're going to go into fields. And then if you remember, if you remember, whenever we get the records back, it basically has multiple layers. So you have under underneath records, you have fields underneath fields, you have status. So that's what we're actually going to go implement into that. And we're going to save that to a variable called project status. And just for demonstration purposes, we're just sending that back out to see what the result was. So let's start here. Where's your name? If I put in John, this should now respond with to do. Fantastic. And that is how you're able to actually pull data back around Airtable. Now, let's say, for example, I want to add a note to this project. What I could do is I would go on the talk card and I would just tell the user, what would you like, or would you like to add a note? I could then use a button card to give the users the options. I could have yes here. And it's always important whenever I'm using yes or no as buttons, put in 10, because some people will put yes, some people will put sure, sure, some people will put okay. But if you do not attach these intents, voice will not make the difference between yes and yeah. Even if you have a button that says yes, if somebody says yeah, it won't count as a yes unless you have the intent of yes. Another button that says no. This is not. If somebody says no, I can just make it end. If somebody says yes, then what I could do is I could ask the user what would they like it to say. I could then use a listen card to capture the entire response. And then the last part of that is I'm going to use an API call once again, similar to the get request that we had earlier, but this time we're actually going to be pushing data towards Airtable to update something. Now to add notes in your project, this is actually done in two different steps. The first one is in order to add notes to any project, we're going to need the record ID of the Airtable record. To do so, if we go back into the get record, whenever we first inputted John, one thing that we want to return is the status. But another thing that we're going to want, that we're going to need now is the actual ID. So if you go to send a request and ID generate, you'll notice that the ID, this is what we're looking for. So in order to capture that right underneath records, we have to call the ID. So if I go in here and I press response dot records, similar as last time, currently the token bracket zero dot ID. And then let's assume I'm going to create a new variable called project ID. Now, what if I want to display this just for testing purposes? Go in here, press down, open this to project ID. Fantastic. Now we have our project ID as well. We can go ahead and delete this, connect this back to here. Now that we have our project ID as well, if we want to display the status of a specific project, all we have to do is once we have the project ID as retrieved from the get request, we would ask the user to then add in a note. After that, we can ask them, what would you like the note to say? Now here's where things are always a little bit tricky, but once you have the note that the user wants to add, as well as the actual project status and project ID, what we're going to use is a API step. And this one is going to be a patch. Patch just means that we're going to find a specific record and we're going to update a specific field within that record. It's going to look very similar to our get request, right? Where we have the entire table. So it stops right here. And then with that patch request, what we're telling it is that within the records, find a record that has an ID of project ID. Now this is taken directly from this. This is why we actually retrieved project ID. Once we're there, 
we then want to update a couple of the fields and this one's going to be the nose field but what are we updating with last utterance now there's a little bit of trial and error i just use ChatGPT whenever i get stuck it usually helps me out pretty quickly but once you have all of this set up after that in case everything has gone right this should say your product has been updated so let's say, for example, and if I go here, let's say I want to update, my name's Mary and I want to update my project with speed. I start all the way back here. And it's going to ask me, what is your name? Now, I'm going to put in Mary. And this should give me in progress as the project status. Fantastic. Now let's say, would you like to add a note? Sure. What I don't know to say, I want it to say looking forward. Now, assuming everything has gone right, if I go back in my Airtable database, you can see that the node has been updated to looking forward to it. And that is a simple way of just being able to push data and pull data from Airtable. And you could use this for a bunch of different cases. A big one would be obviously customer records, but you could also add a login function to only show or protect whose data you can show or whose information you can show. But I hope that was useful, Faisan. I hope. That answers your question as far as how do you actually integrate with Airtable. There's plenty of different options, but I think if you're just getting started, this is a really, really good way to get familiar with the entire process. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it for me for today. Thank you very much for watching. If there's anything that I missed or anything you want me to go over, I've got plenty of different videos about Airtable and VoiceFlow. Otherwise, you can watch my latest video by clicking somewhere on screen. Thank you.